This video series is funded by Jewish Hospital Foundation, Norton Healthcare, and the United States Surgical Corporation. Next we'll take a look at the coronary arteries, which provide the vitally important blood supply to the heart itself. The detailed branching pattern of these vessels is highly variable. What we'll see here is just one example. To see the coronary arteries, we'll look from above at a heart from which most of the epicardial fat has been removed. Here's the pulmonary trunk. Here's the aorta. To see where the coronary arteries arise, we've removed both atrial appendages. The left atrial appendage was here, the right atrial appendage was here. Here's the right coronary artery. It arises from the right aortic sinus, which is here. The right coronary artery gives off this branch to the upper part of the right atrium, then runs downwards in the right atrioventricular groove, giving off branches to the right ventricle. The right coronary artery passes round to the underside of the heart. Here it is again. Its terminal branch is the right interventricular artery. Now, we'll look at the left coronary artery. Here it is. It arises behind the pulmonary trunk from the left aortic sinus. The left coronary artery soon divides, giving off this circumflex branch and several branches to the left ventricle, the longest of which is the left interventricular artery, also called the left anterior descending artery. The circumflex branch of the left coronary artery runs around to the underside of the heart in the left atrioventricular groove, sending further branches to the left ventricle. The blood that goes out by way of the coronary arteries returns mainly by way of a system of coronary veins, which join to form a large venous channel, the coronary sinus. As we saw earlier, the coronary sinus ends by entering the underside of the right atrium here. Here's the coronary sinus in an intact heart. The coronary sinus passes around the left intraventricular groove to the underside of the heart. Its opening into the right atrium is just below and in front of the inferior vena cava. Coronary veins from the right side of the heart also empty into the coronary sinus. Now that we've seen some dissected specimens, let's take a further all-around look at an intact heart with all the epicardial fat intact. We'll take a second look at all four chambers in the order in which blood passes through them. Here's the right atrium, with the superior vena cava entering above and the inferior vena cava below. Here's the right atrial appendage. Here's the location of the tricuspid valve. Here's the right ventricle. It's almost obscured by fat. Here's the infundibulum. The pulmonary valve is here. Here's the pulmonary trunk passing to the left of the aorta and dividing into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. Here's the left atrium with two pulmonary veins entering on the right and two on the left. Here's the left atrial appendage. The mitral valve is here. Here's the left ventricle 
Its outflow pathway is here, leading to the aorta. Here's the aorta, and the aortic valve is here, 